and that's when it moves. So that uh, is one of the frictions we're going to measure today using <coughs> these little computers here. And the force probe measures forces. If I pull on here harder and harder, the number gets bigger and bigger in Newton. So we're going to hook that up. A computer. We're going to have force versus time on our graph. start pulling, like I said, the shoe's not going to move, and we're going to pull harder and harder and harder until it slips. This point where we slip is how much um, static friction there is. And then uh, once it slips and it's moving, and I'm going to try and pull it so that it's moving at just kind of like a constant speed. Get some little wobbles in here like this. And this kind of flat part here is going to be the force, the kinetic force. Uh, and I'll do a little demonstration with my shoe in just a second. Um, everyone's shoe weighs different, so a heavier shoe you're going to have to pull harder to get it to move. So once we have our static friction force, like so, we're going to divide it by the weight of the shoe. Because everyone's shoe is going to weigh different. And this will give us a number that we call this Greek mu. <coughs> and this is the uh, coefficient of static friction. Same thing for the um, kinetic, or the coefficient of kinetic friction. And that's the number you can compare with everyone else in the class, right? If I have a really heavy shoe, um, then my force might go all the way up to here. But someone with a lighter shoe might only go to right there, but that doesn't tell you that my friction is better, it just tells you my shoe is heavier. So we're going to divide by the weight so that we can actually uh, compare the friction between Somebody want to help me? <coughs> do a quick run. Shayla, you want to help him? Uh, okay. Go ahead. So come Go on ahead. up here. numbers aren't exactly the same because every test isn't going to be the same. So we're going to do three tests and then we're going to take the average at the bottom. Um, and then once you've gotten that average, that's what you're going to plug in here, <coughs> an average static force or an average kinetic force, and then divide by the weight to get your coefficient of friction. Do we have uh, standards for <coughs> the weight? Are we going to add the nine? Uh, yeah, so I weighed this way. Oh, that's one thing I forgot to do with the shoe. That's why these numbers are so much smaller. Yes. Yeah. For the weight. 
weights. So you can put the weight in to kind of simulate that there's actually a person in there. Yeah, that would have been way better. <laughs> so don't forget to put the weight in the shoe. I weighed um, that one, and it was 9.70 newtons. And then I weighed these guys for using that. So you're going to take that, and then you're going to add to it the weight of your shoe. And the weight of your shoe, you're just going to hang it on here. And this will tell you the force of gravity on your shoe. <coughs> Mine's 5.2 newtons. So you're going to do the weight of your shoe with your prototype on it, yeah. strapped on. So somebody has to volunteer to take their f shoe off, not their foot off. I almost said foot off. Don't take your foot off. That would be bad. And um, 